Hey everybody, today I'm going to do a double applique embroidery design on a sweatshirt. This is a child sweatshirt size 14, 16, just for reference so you'll know how big it is. And the design size is six and a half by six inches, is, that's what the measurements are. I'm gonna hoop this in a, I'm not gonna hoop this. I'm gonna hoop 809 as my stabilizer and I am going to float this on top of that stabilizer using a six by 10 embroidery hoop on my brother VE2200 and we'll get to it. Okay, you wanna start off by securely hooping your item. I always float my items and this is a sweatshirt. This is the area that the applique is gonna be embroidered in. So I have it pinned out of the way so that it doesn't fall in, okay? That's step number one. Prepare your fabrics for your design, whatever you're gonna be using for your applique, and that way they'll be ready when it's time for you to use them. You won't have to stop in the middle of your stitching to prepare your fabrics. All right, place your garment that's already hooped onto the machine. Make sure it's locked in place. Have your design uploaded, your needle should be properly threaded we're going to run the first placement stitch which will be for the background fabric because with the applique you're actually working from the back forward so the very background will be the first thing to go on so we'll run the placement stitch keeping a close eye on your garment because you do not want your machine to eat it up Okay, so now you're gonna place your background fabric over those placement stitches. Make sure it's all flat so that it's not getting folded over into the stitches. And we're gonna run that stitch, which is gonna tack it down. And do keep in mind that it is never advised that you put your hands in the embroidery stitch field while the machine is running. Most of the time you'll find that people will pin down their fabric to keep it in place. But I'm honestly kind of rushing to play catch up so I just figured I would skip pinning it down but definitely don't put your fingers in the embroidery field and get distracted and end up getting your fingers all jammed up. Now at this point, we can either opt to take it completely out and trim around it, or we can run the next stitch, which is the placement line for the inner fabric or the feature fabric, which is what I'm gonna do. And that's just gonna reduce how many times I take my hoop in and out of the machine. With some designs, you have absolutely no choice but to take it out after every stitch or after every color run. 
but for this design we'll be okay doing it this way Now, because this one area over here is flapping over, I'm gonna clip that out of the way because I don't want any, any type of mishaps with that. I don't want it to get stitched down into the design. And so now I've got my placement line here for the feature fabric, which is that inner K. I wanna make sure my design is lined up and going in the right direction. And I'm just gonna place it in there so that it is covering all of the placement line for that feature fabric, which is that inner, the inner K. I'm gonna close that back in. Let's straighten that up just a little bit better. This is looking a little crooked. And we'll tack that down. And here I go again, putting my fingers in there when I shouldn't. Okay, so now we are gonna take it out of the hoop. We're gonna trim around the K for the main fabric, which is your feature fabric. And then we'll go under that and trim the gray, which is the background fabric. So I'm gonna stop the video, take it to the table and start trimming this out. Okay, so now I have the fabric cut out from around the outside fabric and what I call the feature fabric, which is the printed fabric here. And what you can always do, if you are worried or concerned that your fabric might fray, you can outline the edges with some fray check just to keep the threads from unraveling. I'm not gonna worry about that too much today. I am now going to try to pin this back a little bit better. And then I'm going to take this back to the machine we are gonna start at step five or stitch number five, and that will be a satin stitch going around the outside. And then the final stitch will be the satin stitch going around the inner K, okay? So let's go back to the machine. Okay, we are back to the machine and we are at step number five. This is the step where with the previous shirt, I messed up because I walked away from the machine and the fabric, the uh, shirt actually folded down and got stitched into place and I was not able to save it. So I will not be getting up from my machine at this point and I am gonna make sure that everything stitches the way it's supposed to. This is the longest part of this design. I will not run the camera all the time while it's stitching, but just to let you know, it's gonna go through and do a tack down type stitch around the edges, and then it's gonna come back and do a satin stitch over everything, okay? I'll see you in just a minute. Alrighty, so it's done the stitch all the way around the borders, and it is now doing the satin stitch for the outer border. And I will check back in in just a few moments. 
okay so now we are coming to the end of the stitching of the outer border which is a satin stitch and our final stitch will be the satin stitch around the feature fabric so I'm just gonna lower it again and we will stitch that one on out and I will check back with you when it's done alrighty so it is complete I'm gonna take it out of the hoop dust it off and we'll see how it looks alrighty so it is off of the machine I'm going to unpin it and see how it looks get a lint brush and I'll zoom in real quick what do you think not too bad it's a rather long design as far as the stitch time is concerned it is 42 42 minutes is what my machine says is how much actual stitch time now that does not take into consideration preparation time and trimming and all of that so it, it probably took more closer to an hour to actually get this completely done and then this is a redo because I messed up the first one. Those things happen, but you live and you learn and sometimes you learn more than once. I definitely will not walk away from my sweatshirts and things again. And that's part of the reason why at this point I will not do embroidery on anybody's personal items. Um, if I do in, in any embroidery for anybody, it's going to be on something that I can supply because I don't have time for someone to bring a $50, $60 sweater to me and my machine eats it up and then I've got to pay for a $50, $60 sweater. That's just something I'm not about to do. Now I'm going to trim around the stabilizer in the back without cutting into the fabric. The fabric of the shirt of uh, I should say get that all trimmed up and if you need um, like if you're doing an embroidery on a shirt for a, a baby or somebody with sensitive skin you can always use uh, some cover soft on the back of this they sell it at of course all stitch um, and I would imagine they sell it at other places, but that is primarily where I buy my supplies from as far as stabilizers and whatnot. So let's see how this looks. Oh, sorry. Apologies. It's not looking too bad. I try to keep a lint brush ready to go, but this one was not ready. I've been using it. get some of those extra strings off and sometimes you can just pull them out or clip them out I guess I'll get my embroidery scissors and clip that out right there but for the most part I like the way this looks and I'm hoping that he likes the way it looks as well and let's see I'll just straighten it up here so you can see it okay that is a double varsity letter what is it called a varsity letter double fabric applique this specific design I got on Etsy but the company is called River Mill Embroidery and they also have a standalone website as well but when I find them on Etsy I just get them on Etsy because the one nice thing about buying things on Etsy, as long as it's not a design that's been um, shut down because of like copyright or something or the, the shop didn't just close down, your designs will stay there. That's a little bit of black fabric that's showing in from the applique fabric. And that's because um, 
I guess I didn't trim it close enough. Now that's where the fray stop would come in, come in handy at. You just, you know, trim, put the fray stop along the edges and then let it dry and clip closer to the stitch line. But I didn't do that. So I do have a little bit of black fabric showing right there. I don't know if you can really tell or not, but I could tell because I'm looking at it. So right up in there, I can see a little bit of it. But for the most part, I'm okay with it. Um, I just wanted to get him a sweatshirt with a sports print on it for Spirit Day, even though everything is virtual. <laughs> Tell me how you like it. Have you tried it? Do you have another method of doing appliques? And if you have any questions, leave them for me. I'll be glad to answer. Thanks for watching.